Down to size so that we can uh, do some measurements. We're using the same plastic track that Jonathan showed you earlier, just a couple sections of it, and a printed part that puts the track at an angle on our rotating platform. So again, we have that on Thingiverse. So uh, we've had a couple different versions of this adapter. This one is at a little higher angle because I found out that the faster the cart was moving, the bigger the effect. Coriolis effect, Coriolis force, is uh, an inertial force that we uh, introduce when we're talking about a rotating reference frame. If I look at this cart as it rolls down the hill, if the cart is being rotated by the platform, it's similar to an ice skater pulling in their arms, or we have a platform that you can sit on. So if the track is rotating with Omega up as the cart comes down, that's just like pulling in your arms. What's going to happen to your rotational rate? Should speed up. Should speed up. What makes it speed up? Well, that gets tricky. You can talk about it in a lot of different ways. Some people just like to talk about conservation of angular momentum, and that works great for looking at the direction, uh, how it's going to increase its speed. You can even calculate what the final speed is going to be. But it doesn't do a very good job of explaining what you would feel if you were on the cart as it's rotating around. If you are a molecule in the rotating storm system, uh, or you're an astronaut up in a futuristic type of space station that is rotating. So some people call these fictitious forces. It is an inertial force. It is present in the rotating frame of reference. And that's what we're going to do today, analyze it from the viewpoint of the cart, not from the external viewpoint. The cart can measure a lot of things. It will measure its speed as it moves down the track. It will measure the rotational rate of the track itself with its gyro chip. And it has a built-in accelerometer, so it will measure directly that sideways Coriolis acceleration as it moves down. Yep. Make it clear that it's sideways. Yeah. OK, There's so the, the, the formula for Coriolis acceleration is a negative 2 times omega cross v. Omega is the rotational uh, velocity of the track, and I will try and always remember to throw it in the same direction so that omega is up. V is down the track, so omega cross V is actually to my left, your right, but there's a negative in front of it. It's a negative 2 times omega cross V, so it actually creates a right turn if you will. And you can actually demonstrate, it won't show very well here, so I won't do it, but you can demonstrate it for your students by starting it not in the groove. There's nice, deep uh, wheels that fit into a good size V in the track that keep it from flying off. But if you purposely start it outside, you can see when you rotate it one way, well, there we go. As it comes down, it actually stays right against this rail. But if you start it on the other side as it comes down, it actually derails and goes flying off, which is a nice demonstration in its own. So you can prove which way the force is. What Ann's talking about is that we're measuring this acceleration directly. There is several different ways to measure by an encoder as it comes down. The acceleration is an acceleration chip that's on board that has a direction as well. And there's a gyro chip that's actually measuring the rotation of the track. So we can do all of this at once. We'll take live data and then just look at that graph. Uh, the only other thing that I wanted to uh, talk about was in terms of relating to things on the surface of, of the Earth. If you look at air movement, it's more complicated because the Earth is round. And so say, well, let's do a projectile, uh, a long range projectile. At the equator, you think it's moving really fast, but its radius, it's the distance from the rotation action axis of the Earth is not changing. 
where if it's up more closer to the North Pole, then that velocity along the surface of the Earth uh, is much bigger. This is a simpler problem because we're going down a track, but the speed is still changing. Omega is still changing. All these variables are changing as it moves down, but since we're measuring it real time, we can calculate it. Should we just go ahead and take, take so, the data? So this is a graph of? This is a graph of, well, two things. On the graph will be both the measured acceleration from the chip and so the... The measured acceleration perpendicular to the track? Yes. Uh, Z on, on, on our equation here. Right angle to the velocity. And the calculated uh, centripetal acceleration, which includes two measurements, the velocity down the track and the angular speed. Want to go ahead and just do it? Mm -hmm. Let me get started. OK, you got started. OK, wait for it. He has a start condition. Wait for it. There we go. And a stop condition, too. So once it's gone a certain distance, it stops. The acceleration data itself. Uh, is a little jagged. Uh, it is real acceleration data as this is coming down, especially when it goes at the transition between the two. That causes a little bit of a vibration. And it's changing the colors so they show up a little bit. The acceleration, why don't you uh, click on the acceleration there and do a little smoothing, show them what that looks like, and then back off. So if you want, you can do you you can smooth a little bit. Uh, I actually like the noisy data. It's real. That's what the acceleration data actually looks like. The other things that you need to do more carefully that we didn't take the time to do is you can zero the gyro. So when you start this off, make sure it's not rotating and zero the gyro chip because it can be off a little bit. And also even the acceleration is. Uh, being being measured, you can start by having it be zero as well. But what you can see is, is the two data track very well. Now, one isn't pure theory. Even the centripetal acceleration calculation is still using real data. So what's, to me, the most amazing thing about this is that we're measuring all three quantities at once. We're measuring the actual speed of the cart, the rotational speed of the, of the track, and that sideways acceleration. The speed's changing, the angular speed's changing, and the acceleration changing yeah, all at once. Did I say centripetal? <laughs> so when you do the uh, uh, transformation from normal inertial, not accelerating reference frame, to a rotating, that's you introduce both the centripetal and the Coriolis. Uh, I mentioned that there's other versions of this adapter that we make. The flat one is perfect for just having this spin around in a circle and measuring the centripetal acceleration. Set it right that time. But yeah, here we're measuring Coriolis. And those adapters are 3D printable. Yes. And if you didn't have a 3 printer, 3D printer and you really, really wanted one, I'd probably even send you one if you wanted one. So, uh, anything well. else? All right. Very nicely done, ladies and gentlemen. Coriolis effect uh, with John Hanks and Anne Hanks.